Well, uh, Diana, thank you so much for sitting down to talk with me here at Wild Goose. Oh, it's wonderful. I mean, and it's a beautiful day. I know. It's not raining for <laughs> a while, so we're going to take it. Like it's, But the rain cooled it down, yes. so it's kind of a perfect match. Um, it's amazing how much you just kind of give in to nature and give in to what's going to happen when it's like, hey, we're here for a few days. Mm -hmm. We're just going to do it. We're going to see what unfolds. I think that's kind of the magic of the Wild Goose. Muddy feet. Right. Is the... <laughs> Once they're already muddy, it's just you give in to what the That's day holds. You know? It's very Jesus-y. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least what like you imagine in your head. You know? That's right. <laughs> um, so I would love to talk to you about the wild goose a little bit because this is, how many times have you been? This is the third time okay. in, a, in a row. Okay. But I was at the very first one. Wow. Okay. Yeah. In Shikori Hills. It's Shikori Hills. And... A long time ago, I was in a meeting at the Washington National Cathedral. Wow. And I said to this group of people, which included some folks who were in emergent at the time, mm. I said, you know, what we really need here is we really need to do something like wild goose. Mm. And they said, well, what's that? Because this, this group of people had, what would that, or no, we need to do something like um, green belt. I'm oh, sorry, yeah. That's what, yeah. So, uh, so, yeah, we need to do something like green belt because. I think that that's kind of where so much of the energy of the future is. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, what's Greenbelt? And I, I, I had never been there, but I knew what it was. Okay. So I explained it to them, and they said, oh, well, that's a really cool idea. Yes. And by the end of that meeting, they, they had sort of organized for me to go up to Trinity Wall Street, which yeah. is a big, wealthy church in New York. And they said, ask them for money and see if we can start this up. And so I went up to Trinity and I explained kind of what this vision had been of this group. And they said, well, that's really interesting. And then I never heard, I never heard back from Trinity. Wow. But what happened next, about six months later, um, I was talking to a friend at uh, Sojourners. And evidently Sojourners had gone to Trinity Wall Street with the same idea. Wow. Right about the same time. and. For whatever reason, uh, you know, I have no no idea why, but they decided to give the startup money to Sojourners. Oh, wow. And so I was involved in all those early conversations, and when the first Wild Goose happened, they invited me. Um, I remember standing on a stage in Shikori Hills, which is not as pleasant. Oh, I know. I've heard the stories. <laughs> <laughs> An environment. There were so many bugs. And I hate, I hate. I hate camping. Yeah, me too. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm so grateful for all of the wild goosers who love to camp. Yes. So, yes, me you too. guys camp, I will stay in a cabin or a hotel room. Yes, <laughs> me too. Um, so, But so I was there, and um, I'll never forget it because I was on the stage, and they had given me a time to speak. I was talking about awakening, mm. what an awakening is. And um, we. I started at, I believe, five and I, it may be six, and I was ending two hours later. Mm -hmm. So it was a nice big section. And I started in the light, and by the time mm. I was done, it was dark, mm. and there were no lights. And so I, wow. <laughs> I literally, I mean, this is this is the first wild yeah, goose. Yeah, bless. So, somebody <laughs> didn't even think <laughs> that you should have wow. like lights yeah. in the tent for when <laughs> the sun went down. And so I can remember standing literally in the dark, not being able to see people who were sitting on the ground, because there were no chairs, um, with a single speaker and talking about whether or not we had entered into the fourth great awakening. And the whole time the other stage was too close to me and it was music. And so, <laughs> this is the most miserable experience I have ever had in my entire life between the ticks and talking in the dark. And I thought, I thought this, I'm not going back. And so it, it took me about 10 years. <laughs> wow. And and then I heard, you know, how great it was. And I, and I kind of wondered, well, you know, maybe I was just supposed to be there kind of as a, you know, whatever, a doula, birthing coach, yeah. you know, yeah. um, and that there's not much place for me now. Yeah. And um, uh, when I suggested that as a possibility to some of the producers, they said, we want you to come. We've wanted you to come so badly for so long. Please, please, please come. And I said, well, do you have air conditioning? Yeah. <laughs> <Is> there somewhere. 
And so, so this has been really exciting for me to be able to be, to come back when it's more grown. Yeah. And to know that there was just this little tiny part that I played at the beginning, because along with some other people, I had this, a vision for this too. Yeah. And that um, just means the Holy Spirit's at work. Yeah. Oh. So that's my wild goose story. And now it's fantastic because I get to, uh, there was a bug. Yeah. Um, I get to, um, you know, basically they love me to preach or teach and they just sort of say, what do you want to do this year? Yeah. And, yeah. I love that. I love that. It is great. It, you know, it's also great being 60 because yeah. then you just tell people. You just tell yeah. these guys. You say, well, uh, this is what I want to do. And they say, oh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. And it's like, oh, when did that happen? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love that. I love that. And, you know, I, I'm very reflective this year, too, because this is my seventh goose. Oh, my gosh. Yes. That's amazing. And so it's like I'm, I've seen some of those changes, too, you yeah. know, how, I mean, I didn't go to Shikori Hills, praise the Lord. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I definitely have seen some of those changes. And even I would say probably over the last three years, you know, you've seen those changes. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm wondering then what are some of those things that you see, as you said, the, as the wild goose has grown up. Right. You know, what are some of those things? Well, certainly one of them happened this morning, mm -hmm. and that was um, I did the waking the goose. Okay. Uh, so that's the first thing that happens on the stage, which is kind of a sermon and sort of an inspirational talk with some worship wrapped around it. And then the next person who was on stage was Jackie Lewis, oh, yeah. um, who's so wonderful. Amazing, yeah. Yeah. And uh, then the third person on that same stage, so so I was at nine, Jackie was at ten, and then Barbara Brown Taylor was oh, at eleven. Yeah. And um, I think that's the first time in the history of Wild Goose that there were three women mm. back to back on main stage, and to say that that's how we started. That yeah. was the first morning. And um, Jeff Clark, the producer, he did mention to me that he, he, before I brought it up, he said, I think this is the first time mm. we've ever had three women start the goose. And I thought, wow. Yeah. And someone had mentioned to me yesterday, they said, did you notice that you know, three women starting tomorrow? And I said, I said, yeah, I guess so. And he said, wow, you know, you and Jackie and Barbara, what a great team. And I literally said, hmm. Fielding your best women first, I said. <laughs> you know, I <laughs> give us the World Cup, man. Yes. And and to be able to do that, and I did it this morning at the oh, stage. I awesome. walked. I, I told the little joke, and I walked out, and I did this. Yeah. And I just looked at them, yeah. and the audience went crazy, because it was like no apology, no yeah, false humility. Yeah. You know, we're women. Yeah. We got something to say. Yeah. We have authority. We have power. Yeah. We got the Holy Spirit. Uh, this is our place. Yeah. And so this morning, to be able to put my arms up like that, yeah. at, uh, for for the women of Wild Goose, um, from the beginning until however that's going to move into the future, yeah. it's just fabulous. Yeah. And to see that audience respond. Mm. And they knew. They, they knew. knew. You know, yeah. it was like, you know, bring it, sister. Yeah. You know, win oh. one for the team. And I love it. And uh, that it was also not just three women, but it was two white women and one black woman. Yeah. And that, I, can't, I can't even fathom that yes. from when I think I may have been the only woman who spoke. Wow. The first one other than Phyllis Tickle. Wow. Wow. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's come a, a long way. That is a really long yeah. way. Well, we have to wrap up, but oh, I want to no, I want to ask talk you about women. At the yeah, place. I know. Yeah. Um, that's true. I hadn't thought about that. Um, I do want to ask you about politics because that's the thing we're not supposed to talk about, um, <laughs> and we don't talk about the pol about politics a lot. I think at the goose. I mean, people do sessions about it, but you know, that's one of the things I've been working on uh, through the People's Supper is bringing people to tables uh, for all kinds of conversations, but mostly around storytelling. Um, but we did some, um, we, we did a series of suppers called the Midterm Five, where we brought people together in purple cities wow. um, to have supper together and just tell their stories around citizenship and mm -hmm. politics and all kinds of things. And you're re-releasing a book about politics and faith and people are often like, really, they don't want to talk about it. They're very shy. We don't know right. how to talk about it. So what's just like one thing in this moment, as you're, you're really thinking about this right now, what's one thing in this moment you would say to people, especially spiritually minded people? The, the book that's being re-released, I wrote in the wake of 9-11. Mm. And it's fascinating because it was my least 
best-selling book. Hmm. It sold the fewest copies of anything I wrote. Huh. And um, it was also very controversial because the publisher asked me to write a little book because I had some interesting ideas, interesting things to say about faith and politics post 9-11. And uh, so the so publisher approached me and said, would you like to write that down as a series of reflections? And I said, yeah, I'd love to. Wrote it down, sent it in, and the publisher said, we can't publish this. It's too radical. Wow. And I look at it now. I, I mean, when you read it, you'll just laugh knowing that. Wow. But this is also, you know, 2003, 2004. People were terrified. Yeah. Yeah. And there was so little criticism of the idea of war and so little criticism yeah. of the president. And my book was critical yeah. in, in a way that I felt was biblical and theological and appropriate. And so, so then it had to find another publisher. It mm. eventually did. It came out. I think it maybe sold five or 6,000 copies, which is really, truly the book that hasn't sold anything compared wow. to some of my other wonderful, amazing books. So, so I was really heart sick about it, mm. and I, and um, then it went out of print. Oh wow! And as it happened, another publishing company said that they wanted to buy up a couple of my books that were going out of print, and um, would I want to see it re-released? Mm. And so I was, I was very scared. Mm. Yeah. So it was like, oh, I had a bad experience with that. I lost friends over that book. Wow. You know, the first publisher really pulled the rug out from underneath my feet. Um, but the book is called Broken We Kneel, mm. Reflections on Faith and Citizenship. And you, the, the big slogan, of course, post 9-11 was, United We Stand. Yeah. And I was working in a church, and at the time the book was written, and United We Stand became almost like an in-your-face yeah. kind form of Christian nationalism. Mm. And I've always been terrified of, uh, of religious nationalism. And so I said in this little piece, wouldn't broken we kneel mm. be a more appropriate posture? Yeah. Is that we face politics, we face crisis with humility and not hubris. Mm. And so that's really the theme of the book, wow. is what it means to face these days with humility. And um, the, the really fun uh, part of the, the, the project for me is most of the action of this small book takes place at a church called Christ Church in Alexandria, Virginia. Oh. And I was pretty hard on them. Hmm. I gotta say, looking back, that was the piece. You know, people were not so loath about my, my theology, but they were really worried that I had said some things that were critical about this church. Okay. Well, what the new edition, um, goes back to Christ Church. Wow. And um, <laughs> very unexpectedly. Mm. So I wrote this book, 15 years later I'm writing another book. And it just so happens that on, uh, what was it, August 17th or 19th, it was a week after Charlotte's, mm. a couple, it was right after Charlottesville. Wow. Um, and so Christ Church had been sponsoring for months an actual protest rally in front of Richard Spencer, the Nazi leader's yeah. office. Wow. He had moved to Alexandria when Donald Trump became president. And so here we have a Nazi living in our wow. neighborhood. And Christ Church, much to my surprise, I mean, I was, I was floored, uh, would take every other week a group of people over to Richard Spencer's mm. office and they would have a protest. Oh. And no Nazis in our neighborhood, that kind of thing. And so when Charlottesville happened, I called up a friend of mine from Christ Church and I said, can I come with you to the protest this week? And she said, um, oh, we'd love to have you. She's one of the few people who wasn't mad at me for the book. <laughs> and so she, we'd love to have you. And so she told me where I went. So I go up to Christ Church and here it is this hot Sunday afternoon. And Christ Church is a very t kind of tony, a little bit old fashioned, very proper Southern Episcopal Church. Wow. I think they have one black member. Yeah. Um, and so, um, so you kind of get this picture. Yeah. So, so I met my friends from Christ Church there, and they were dressed in like Lily Pulitzer and and Brooks Brothers. I'm from the South, so I know exactly. Yeah. What <laughs> and so, yeah. so there's little seersucker suits and pearls and the whole thing, and my friend is holding up this sign that says resist racism and 
and people were holding up Black Lives Matter signs. Wow. This is Christchurch. Wow. These are white people who yeah. have lived in, in Alexandria for like, you know, they're 40 years. Yeah. And they're standing yeah. on this corner, uh, you know, <laughs> and they're chanting uh, things like, uh, hey, hey, ho, ho, white supremacy has got to go. Wow. And if, if I hadn't been, you know, I mean, I was so floored. Uh, but I would have been laughing. Yeah. It was like the most um, remarkable thing wow. that I had seen in years wow. was to see these people who had been so, so lockstep pro-war in yeah. Iraq, all this sort of stuff. Yeah. And then Charlottesville happens and they're standing yeah. on a corner protesting against white yeah. supremacy. And I, the, the, the Sunday protest ended with all these white people in their Sunday best with the resist racism and Black Lives Matter signs singing, We Shall Overcome. Wow. And that's my last chapter in the book. Wow. Is things can change. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, for me, I think what I've sort of learned in the in that journey of writing the book and then rewriting it, and what and I think what's really valuable, it's a long answer, but I think what's really valuable for people to consider is one, nothing is set in stone. Yeah. Is that people's hearts can really be transformed. And two, I think that I learned in myself is that there was really fundamentally nothing wrong with United We Stand. Mm. United We Stand is, is a great way of seeing the world mm. if you're standing on a street corner protesting yeah. Richard Spencer. Right. With a whole bunch of white people you never thought yeah. would be able to ever do that. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, I've written about my participation in the Women's March, I've been yeah. in the Climate March and Gun Marches and all kinds of stuff, and to be able to stand those incredible diverse crowds. Yeah. And so United We Stand is great, as long as it's not about hubris and winning. Yeah. It depends on who you're standing with. Yeah. And then, on the other hand, I still believe in broken we kneel. Yeah. Um, and I think what I've learned is that um, humility is always the pathway yeah. to real politics. Mm. To, to a real Christian vision of politics. Yeah. So both United We Stand and Broken We Kneel, that they have to work together. Mm. Who are we standing with? And can we really truly admit yeah. when we, can we, can we be on our knees when we need to be? Mm. And uh, that includes everything from myself, saying I might have been wrong and misjudged mm. the people at Christchurch. Yeah. I didn't give them enough of a chance to change, to you know, think about broken we kneel, you automatically think about Colin Kaepernick. And, yeah. And the power of the kneeling in prayer, the civil yeah. rights movement. So I, I think I've learned that things are more beautifully complex mm. and more sort of interconnected than I ever imagined. Mm. And that comes for religion and politics as it does for every part of life. Yeah. Well, I might have to actually read a book about politics for once. I tend to stay away from those because they're depressing. <laughs> they but this depressing. one seems like it's not going to be depressing. So I hope we, I hope I read it and that everybody gets a chance to read it. Well, I, think I, it'll be helpful. I hope you would love it. Yeah. Because I, when I went back, I was afraid of it, and then I realized yeah. I actually had loved my own book. Oh, that's so great. That's yeah. so great. Well, thank you for taking time out to talk with me. Oh, it's busy just such a wonderful it's been awesome. thing.